uterovaginal prolapse. Uterovaginal prolapse is a condition whereby the uterus protrudes down the vagina and sometimes out of the vaginal opening called the introitus. Degrees of uterovaginal prolapse The extent of descent of the uterus determines the severity of the prolapse. This is generally divided into three degrees. First degree uterovaginal prolapse. The uterus sags down up to the introitus but remains within the vagina. Second degree uterovaginal prolapse. Here the cervix protrudes out of the vaginal opening but the body of the uterus still remains in the vagina. Third degree uterovaginal prolapse. The whole uterus has protruded out of the vaginal opening. This condition may occur together with the descent of the rectum called rectocele, the descent of the bladder called cystocele, the descent of part of the intestine through the back part of the uterus called enterocele, or the descent of the urethra, urethrocele. Sometimes the vagina can descend after a hysterectomy and this is called vaginal vault prolapse. Causes Uterovaginal prolapse occurs when there is a weakening of the tissues that support the uterus. There are several reasons why uterovaginal prolapse occurs. They are difficult childbirth, menopause, increased intra-abdominal pressure. Difficult childbirth Women who have delivered large babies or have had difficult labor have a higher risk of developing uterovaginal prolapse. A difficult childbirth can cause muscle weakness and stretching of the tissues supporting the uterus. This could lead to a prolapse in the future. Menopause After menopause, a lack of hormone estrogen causes the loss of muscle tone associated with aging and this may lead to prolapse. Increase intra-abdominal pressure Occasionally, diseases that increase the intra-abdominal pressure such as chronic cough, severe constipation and pelvic tumors can lead to or aggravate a prolapse of the uterus. Risk factors for pelvic organ prolapse include the following. Increasing age. The older a patient, the higher the risk of developing a uterovaginal prolapse. Increasing body mass index or obesity. There is a higher chance of developing uterovaginal prolapse in heavier women. Increasing gravidarity and parity. Women with more children have a higher chance of developing uterovaginal prolapse. Number of vaginal deliveries. The more the number of vaginal deliveries, the higher the chances of developing uterovaginal prolapse. Macrosomic delivery. The bigger the babies delivered vaginally, the higher the chances of developing uterovaginal prolapse. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Women with chronic pulmonary obstructive disease leading to severe cough have a higher chance of developing uterovaginal prolapse. Constipation. Chronic constipation causes increased intra-abdominal pressure and can lead to uterovaginal prolapse. Strenuous activity, weight bearing or strenuous labor. Women doing strenuous activity including weight bearing activities and strenuous labor are more prone to develop uterovaginal prolapse. Symptoms Many women may have mild uterovaginal prolapse and not have any symptoms at all. Some, however, will feel the symptoms below. Feeling of a mess coming down the vagina. Dragging sensation or discomfort in the lower abdomen or pelvis. Backache. Difficulty or inability to completely move the bowel. Difficulty or incomplete emptying of the bladder. Leakage of urine called incontinence during coughing, straining or sneezing. Vaginal discharge or bleeding. Feeling or loosening of the vaginal tone during sexual intercourse. Prevention. It may be difficult to prevent the occurrence of a uterovaginal prolapse. However, 
the following strategies may reduce the incidence of a prolapse. Pelvic floor exercise. Performing pelvic floor exercise on a regular basis will help strengthen the pelvic floor muscles. This is especially important after childbirth. During labor, avoid bearing down before the cervix is fully dilated. Treat and prevent constipation. Drink plenty of water and eat high fiber food. Control chronic cough. Avoid lifting heavy objects. Use your legs instead of your waist and back when lifting. Maintain an ideal body weight. Treatment. There are several treatment options. Pelvic floor exercise. In a mild form of uterovaginal prolapse, pelvic floor exercise may assist in strengthening the pelvic floor muscles. This may not improve the prolapse but may slow down the worsening of prolapse. Pessary. A pessary is a plastic ring that can be placed in the vagina to push the cervix and the uterus up. This method is suitable for women who cannot undergo surgery due to other health problems and those who are not sexually active. The pessary will need to be cleaned and replaced regularly. Most women can lead a healthy lifestyle. Estrogen cream is usually given to keep the vaginal tissue moist and to prevent ulceration of the vagina. Surgery There are many different surgeries that can be performed for uterovaginal prolapse. Surgery can either be done via the vaginal root or the abdomen. Surgery via the abdominal root can be performed either by a laparotomy or by laparoscopy. Vaginal root. There are several surgeries that can be performed via the vaginal root. This includes vaginal hysterectomy and pelvic floor repair, Manchester repair, and vaginal mesh placement. Vaginal hysterectomy and pelvic floor repair. This surgery is performed on women who have completed their families and are not keen on retaining their uterus. This is the most common surgery performed for uterovaginal prolapse. Vaginal hysterectomy is usually performed under spinal anesthesia. The entire surgery is performed via the vaginal root. The uterus is removed and the vaginal wall is repaired vaginally. If there is an associated cystocele, the bladder is separated from the vaginal skin and the tissues are sutured together so as to push the bladder into the abdomen. This surgery is called anterior colporaphy. If there is a rectocele or enterocele, this can be repaired as well, and this is called posterior colporaphy. The advantage of this surgery is that it is generally an easy operation that can be performed under spinal anesthesia. Since there are no abdominal incision, the post-operative recovery is quicker. The disadvantage of this operation is that the incidence of recurrence of prolapse is high, especially in women who have poor pelvic tissues for support. Another disadvantage is that the vagina becomes narrow and this may lead to painful sexual intercourse post-operatively. There is also a difficulty in removing the ovaries vaginally. Manchester Repair This surgery can be performed on patients who have a mild prolapse and wish to retain their uterus. In this surgery, part of the cervix is removed and part of the support of the uterus, namely the cardinal and uterosacral ligaments, are tightened and attached to the cervix to push the uterus into the abdomen. Vaginal Mesh Placement a mesh is a synthetic permanent material with many holes in it. The mesh provides additional support by allowing the body's own tissue to grow into it. In uterovaginal prolapse, the mesh is usually placed after a vaginal hysterectomy. It is placed under the vaginal skin and above the vagina. To keep the mesh in place, 
the mesh may have arms that exit through few additional small incisions at the thigh and or buttock. Many different types of mesh are available in the market. The advantage of vaginal mesh placement is that it is placed vaginally and so the operation is relatively simple. The chances of recurrence of prolapse are lesser with meshes as compared to just using sutures to support the vaginal vault. However, there are several possible complications with vaginal mesh placement. These may include mesh exposure which may lead to vaginal discomfort during sexual intercourse and blood staining or spotting. Some women may suffer buttock and groin pain or chronic vaginal pain. There is also a possibility that the mesh may become infected. Abdominal root. Surgery via the abdominal root can either be done by laparotomy or laparoscopy. The laparoscopic root is the preferred choice. Different types of surgery can be performed. Basically, there are two ways of reinforcing the tissues that support the uterus. The first is to use sutures and the second is to use mesh. Surgery can be done with or without the removal of the uterus. If a mesh is used, the surgery is called sacrocolpopexy. The mesh is sutured to the uterus, the cervix or vaginal vault. It is then attached to the sacral promontory. If sutures are used, usually non-absorbable sutures are used to attach the levator ani muscle to the vagina, attach the sacrospinous ligament to the vagina, shorten and attach the uterosacral ligaments together and to the vagina. All these surgeries are discussed in detail in another video. Generally, surgery is not recommended in women who want to conceive again because pregnancy and childbirth will disrupt any repair that has been performed. A pessary may be a better choice for these patients. Utero-vaginal prolapse is a condition whereby the uterus protrudes down the vagina and sometimes out of the vaginal opening called the introitus. There are three degrees of utero-vaginal prolapse. It may be associated with a cystocele, which is a descent of the bladder, a rectocele, a descent of the rectum, and or anthrocele, a descent of part of the intestines to the back part of the uterus. Treatment will depend on the symptoms ranging from just pelvic floor exercises, using a pessary or surgery. Surgery can be done vaginally or abdominally with the aid of a laparoscope. Thank you.